Joseph. My name is Antonio Di Meglio, co-founder and CEO. Today, we are here at the Lowenstein Sandler office, Midtown Manhattan, at the NGEN Trailblazers Conference. Now, NGEN is an organization that is dedicated to supporting the next generation of leading university entrepreneurs. We are honored to be here as their exclusive media partner, and it allows us to meet incredible student founders such as... Harry. Yeah, hey. I'm Harry. Hey, Harry. All right, Harry, <laughs> yeah. welcome to the show. And here we're going to learn more about how Harry's company has been able to make over $3 million in revenue. Yes. And it started when you were 18, right? Yes. Okay. Tell, tell us more, because $3 million starting at 18, that's, that's aspirational. I think we all want to be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I actually met my co-founders when I was 18 at a conference called Gen AI Summit. Uh, they've been working on the prototype for about two years. I stayed in contact with the founders for about two to three years and kind of talked talk them through the process. Uh, I study in the physical therapy program currently at BU. And going into my freshman year, I picked up physical therapy because I tore my ACL and MCL, so I actually went through surgery. How did you tear it? Uh, I was playing American football. Wow. Oh, yeah. I played American football. What position did you I play? I was wide receiver and cornerback. Let's go, corner. Yeah, Get I was some a speed corner. on you. Yeah, I was a four-four right. runner. Let's go. Let's <laughs> yeah, go, thank Harry. You. All right. Yeah, and then <laughs> after I tore my ACL and MCO, I went through surgery, and this idea kind of came about to me in high school on notebook and paper. Mm. So, I kind of just wrote down on the notebook and I was like, why don't I just create a mirror system that's able to kind of just like coach people through workouts. But it took us like around like three years in the making. I didn't meet my co-founder at the time. So I just stayed in contact. I went to BU first year. Uh, went to some hackathon competitions at BU, MIT, and Harvard and won $25,000 in cash prize and pitched all of that money back into the startup. And while I was talking with professors, um, a lot of the professors at University of Rhode Island or just like people who are trying to create our prototype at hackathons because everybody's focused on just like, hey, I want to create like this project with a camera mirroring system where I'm able to track the workouts, but nobody has made it past mockups for like 90%, 99% of the time. Amazing. Okay. So there's a lot to think about here, yes. right? So you were 18, you, you were in mm -hmm. high school and you got this idea, then you were 18, then you went to the hackathon, Yes. right? But your co-founders <laughs> were, were not in your age range? Yeah, my co-founders are actually not in my age range. They graduated from their PhD in 2015. And my other technical founder is actually out of Spain. So I think that's like a really like cool aspect to kind of have a diverse team. And I really think that while you're in like a startup, like a team is definitely crucial to like your development because having a well differentiated team will set you apart from a lot of the different founders that are out there, especially as a student myself getting into like the startup industry. I went into it blank, not knowing what to do. I feel like in high school or just in college, they don't really necessarily teach you like, hey, you should go out there and network. You should go out there and do like a startup. And I think right now is the perfect time for you to just go out there and do like a startup because now you have so many available resources at all these colleges and you have the opportunity to learn from different people who like built a startup from the ground up. Like if you take Elon Musk, for example, every one of these founders have built a startup from the ground up and you can learn from the experience without having to go through the pain that every other founder did. Like for example, myself, right when I got started on the startup, I found the startup 30 to 40 times and broke through 20 computers. Wow. And I think not a lot of founders actually realized like the deep down of just like, hey, I'm doing a startup now. And I think it's really gonna be easy to kind of go through it. But I really think that you need the perseverance and kind of like the motivation to do that. And when I first got started, people are just like, you're gonna be going on an adventure. And that adventure is gonna be worth something if, if you actually have a good prototype. So there's an interesting component here of mm -hmm. like, when do you actually start the adventure, right? Mm -hmm. Because what I'm hearing here is that yeah. there was certainly some time that you spent mm -hmm. to create your product before you brought it to market, Yes. right? And I think this is a great point, mm -hmm. especially for student entrepreneurs. I think a lot of student entrepreneurs mm -hmm. wanna to get to launch as fast as possible. Yeah. Right? Maybe it's even just because when you go to a party, you want to say that you're a founder. Mm -hmm. And when people ask you what you're a founder of, you want to be able to say, okay, here's my mm -hmm. app. Okay, here's my product, right? And that's a common mistake I think that a lot of university founders make. Mm -hmm. However, what I see in your story is patience. Yes. Where does that come from? Yeah, I feel like the patience definitely comes from like my previous background. Uh, I feel like as a student myself, um, I actually got ADHD. And I feel like that's a lot of the case for a lot of the founders, like having that storytelling aspect of things. 
And in high school, I wasn't one of the brightest students, and I was actually surprised I actually made it to like an accelerator program just for physical therapy itself. And I feel like that kind of set me apart from like a lot of the different founders because uh, my teachers actually didn't think I was going to make it to college mm -hmm. and kind of disregarded me, like saying like, hey, I'm going to make I, I want you to go to a community college. I want you to focus on community college instead of actually going to a, like actual college community because I came from a background of actually from Bay Area at one of the more competitive high schools. And everyone there was like, hey, I want to achieve like making a startup now. I want to do like multivariable calculus. I want to do discrete math. And a lot of my friends did, like got their degrees at 16 years old or 17 years old. So that definitely pressured myself to go into like just building a product or just like starting my nonprofit organization while I was 16. <laughs> what was the nonprofit? Yeah, so I built like a nonprofit during the COVID pandemic where we actually helped senior citizens book vac vaccination appointments, where we helped out 50,000 senior centers across the globe. And we achieved 5,000 volunteers in the span of like one year. And I've also done like another study where we just hosted hackathons for high school students while we were in high school. And then we would host like weekend hackathons on Saturdays and Sundays from 9 a.m. all the way until the end of the weekends and basically give some prize money to these students. That's amazing. Uh, my high school, actually, mm -hmm. Bergen County Academy's BCA, created Hack BCA while yeah. I was there, and that was the first ever high school hackathon, I think. Yes. Um, I'm probably more older than you than you think I am. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking the mid-2010s mm -hmm. there. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's awesome. Okay, mm -hmm. I would love to spend a moment, though, yeah. speaking mm -hmm. more about what your app does. Yes. Yeah, yeah so basically what we've created is like, uh, if you guys are familiar with what Lululemon or Peloton is doing with like a mirror system, uh, we basically created that through an iPhone where you basically take your smartphone camera and kind of place it on the ground and you have like a list of exercises that you can kind of choose from. It's kind of like a pocket list that you can kind of choose from. And basically we kind of use like a synthetic pipeline where we basically have a personal trainer that's like recorded and we basically upload that into our synthetic pipeline. And from that video, we get like an AI generated video that kind of shows you how to do the workouts. And through our computer vision model, what's like really cool is we can host live classes, which is our B2C model, yeah. where we could bring in fitness influencers, gaming influencers, or just like physical education teachers, because all of them have a community of people that can literally like coach through class like anywhere, anytime and anywhere accessible from your pocket. And our B2B model is actually just like focus with gyms. Like we could partner up with gyms, have the subscription within gyms and like have our software accessible through gyms. And I think that's like really cool. And during that time, like during COVID, as I mentioned before, after I tore my AC, I really wanted to like just have a, a coach in mm -hmm. front of me to kind of coach me through class. And I think having an influencer in front of me now to kind of just like coach me through class, like whether or not that's like a division one athlete or just like a fitness coach, like probably doing the wrong job, doing the rock Johnson, like everybody knows, yeah. like coaching you through a class, they can set up like a live class price. And then you have 1000 people who are able to get that live class coaching. And everybody has a customized like workout and get like all of the live tracking and real time feedback for calories, repetition, and the amount of time you've been doing a workout for. Dude, this is gonna be massive. I mean, if you get one Dwayne The Rock Johnson type person on this, I mean, not to get too Black mm -hmm. Mirror, right? But like, you don't even need him to actually do any of the workouts, mm -hmm. right? You just need to make sure that you have their yes. likeness or the capability mm -hmm. to utilize their likeness. And mm -hmm. in my opinion, that's a pretty easy partnership mm -hmm. agreement, right? Um, I think the B2B side, I, I'm so pro B2B for mm -hmm. businesses. Like I think yeah. it's just like <laughs> actually so much easier to grow mm -hmm. that way. And I think like the B2B side of like mm -hmm. a lot of these influencers, these fitness influencers are already connecting with gyms. They're already investing mm -hmm. in the next generations of gyms yes. wellness. Uh, and those people, I mean, that's also your acquisition target too, mm -hmm. right? It's potentially one of those gems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And another thing I want to note too is like a lesson I learned myself too is like your net network is your net worth. Because I feel like, especially when you're getting started with a startup, you want to build a product, but you don't have the resources available. Then I kind of like encourage everybody to just go out there and network and kind of put your name out there and kind of have a project idea that you're able to like kind of pursue. Because if you have like a big idea, it's actually successful, then you're gonna have a lot of resources that are gonna be available to kind of help you out. You're gonna have like IPOs, you're gonna have like lawyers, you're gonna have like other founders who have this experience kind of working on their product. And I think like right now is also like the perfect time, like especially when you're in California, you're in Boston, you're in New York or Miami. These are all the hotspots where you can kind of just get like 
the resources available and have a community of people who all will help you out with just like a startup community. Amazing. Uh, as a final note, do you want to give any shout outs to anybody in the BU community? I don't know if you've ever interviewed <laughs> someone from BU before. Yeah, I, I feel like personally, like as a BU student, I don't know. There's like really much startups that are out there. I know there's like BU Innovate, which is like a good research for just like ventures. Um, I think I want to just kind of put my name out there and kind of represent BU itself because I know like there's so many founders now at Ivy League. There's founders at like North, Northeastern, Northwestern. But now if I kind of look at the statistics, you have Northeastern, Harvard, and MIT who are all out there. But there's no successful f the founders that are out of BU. And I feel like I really just want to provide the resources for BU students and kind of let them know that you can make a startup. And even though it fails, like you're still like young and you can start a startup now instead of starting at a later age where you're going to fail and you won't have the resources available for you to start building a startup again. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Harry, thank you so much for your time today. Where can people find you or your app? Mm -hmm. Shout it out. Let <laughs> yeah. the world know. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so you can find our app on uh, Apple Play, uh, Google Play Store, Apple Store, Android, and everywhere. And if you guys want to check out our website at agitapp.com, uh, you can kind of just take a look at our website and also test out our app. We actually have five free trials where you can actually host a live class with your friends. So if you guys want to create a club with your friends and actually test out our app, then feel free to try it and let us know any feedback. And you can just search me up at Harry Chu on LinkedIn. And I'm from BU. And that's my, my takeaway. Awesome. We're going to pull up one day to the gym. We're going to do a custom class together. Mm -hmm. We're going to record all of it. And... I can't wait. I need to, founders need to watch out for their fitness. It, it's too tough sometimes to be able to make time for it. I mm -hmm. think your app, even the founder market, like I don't even want to get into it. It's too long. Harry, thank you, brother. Yeah, Appreciate thank it. You. Yep.